Hi friends! Welcome to my channel. My name's Fiddle. For today's project, we're going to be finishing off the stove with the stove pipe, bellows, and what I'm thinking is a warming cupboard, but I'm not 100% for sure. But that's what I'm going to go with. And anyways, don't forget to check the link in the description. That would take you to the scavenger hunt where you'll find the free printable pattern along with the materials that you'll need to make these pieces for yourself. Okay, let's get started. First, cut out all your pattern pieces. Then, grab your chipboard. But more specifically, for the doors, you want the pieces that are the flaps. At least big enough pieces to cut out the doors. Trace or glue your pattern onto your material with the creases going at the black lines. Then cut it out as you normally would. This makes quick and easy hinges that we don't really have to worry about. Because the cupboard has rounded corners, we're going to use one long piece, and instead of cutting it at the lines, we're going to curl it with a rounded object like a pen, colored pencil, something like that. Wrap it around and then roll your fingers a few times back and forth. It's okay if you curl past the line on either side, that'll just help us later. Next, glue the inside shelf to the back wall. You want it to be just a little bit below your cupboard openings and above the tiny bottom drawers. While that's drying, we're going to attach our sidewalls. You'll need some painter's tape and glue. The painter's tape is to hold it together while we glue the edges. Attach the tape to the outside front of the cupboard, then add glue along the edge a section at a time, taping your piece together as you go. Set it aside to dry and then grab your doors. We're going to go ahead and poke the holes for the handles. Hold your doors to where they're facing each other with the same faces together. Then poke your hole with a pokey tool. This makes sure the door handles would be in the same place on both doors. And while we have the pokey tool out, poke the holes for the tiny drawers. Once you've poked the holes and cut them out, set them aside, we'll come back to them later. But for now, we're going to need some jewelry flathead pins and some seed beads. I used two hexagon beads that were a little bit bigger than seed beads, and then I used three black and silver beads for the tiny drawers. I used UV resin to hold mine together, but if you'd like to use E6000 or some other multi-surface glue, you can do that as well. Now we're ready to glue our handles to our doors. Poke the jewelry pin through the holes that we made earlier and use your E6000 to glue them in place. Once you have all the handles attached, cut off the excess. Now we can attach the doors to the cupboard. 
Put glue on the front side of the flappy tabs and glue it to the inside of the cupboard. We can glue the tiny doors on after we get done painting. In the movie it was hard to tell what color the warming cupboard was. In some shots it looked green, in some shots it looked yellow. So I went with a green color. When I take photos inside the house it looks yellow and matches the wallpaper. I did add a little bit of chalk pastel after I hung it on the wall because I realized that it blends in so much and that helped a little bit but I, I think I need to do something else to it. I'll probably add more chalk pastel in different areas to make it look more realistic and stand out. But anyways, give everything a coat of paint your choice of colors, except for the very back side and the doors. The reason for the back side is because it's going to be glued to the wall. And the same goes for the little doors. There's no point to paint the back side if we're going to be gluing it. Let everything dry completely before moving on to the next step. Now we can close up the cupboard by gluing on the back half. I did it the same way as I did the front, by starting at one edge and going all the way around until it's all glued together. Once it's had a chance to completely dry, we can glue on our tiny doors. If you're choosing to use it as a warming cupboard, we gotta drill a hole in the side for the stovepipe to go through. I used the biggest bit that my hand drill had, and then I used my scissors to widen the hole even more. I'm using plastic bendy straws as my stovepipe. I've had them for quite some time, and I'm glad I'm finally using them. To make sure I was getting the layout right, I took some of my graph paper and laid it up against the wall in the dollhouse, and matched up where the stovepipe came out of the stove, up the wall, and into the cabinet. Now I know where my tubes are going and how long they need to be. Because the straws are the same size round, cut a split up the side just a little bit so you can fit one inside the other. And use super glue as you go. E6000 would also work if you wanted to go that route. To make the T part of the stove pipe, mark out where your hole is on the warming cupboard. Then cut a shallow diamond shape out of the side where you marked the hole. Next, split a small section of straw up the center and poke it through the hole that you just made. We can use super glue to build up around that so it stays in place. Time for a test fit. Make sure everything lines up where it's supposed to. When I originally made the stove, I didn't know how big of a stove pipe I was going to use, so I have some space that I needed to fill between the straw and the stove. And for that I found the end of a writing pin, and the wide end was just big enough to fit inside the hole for the stove, and I did slit the straw a little bit to make it fit in the smaller end. And while editing I had completely forgot that I didn't put the bellows on the pattern sheet. But that's okay because we made one a long time ago and I still had the pattern saved on my computer so I uploaded that to the scavenger hunt. If you haven't gotten the bellows pattern, go back and grab it. For the bellows pieces, it's best to go with wood over chipboard. Mine actually does squeeze a little bit but not all the way and if you want that to be a function, you would definitely want to use wood. I used my craft knife to cut the pieces out then came back in with sandpaper to get that curved. In the movie it looks like the bellows is all white, but because I'm using a blue-green fabric I decided to change it completely and stain my wood brown with an alcohol marker.
Next, cut out your swatch of fabric, and like I said, I didn't have any white, so I went with a green color. I come back later on and color it black with a marker. Once you have the fabric cut out, we can start gluing it to our pieces of wood. The first thing we need to do is stick the rounded end of the bellows into the slit cut in the fabric. Next, starting at the cut end of the bellows, glue your fabric along the side all the way around. Then attach the other side using the same process. Stick the handle through the slit first before you start gluing. and give it a squeeze test for good measure. It works perfect. I only wished it would have been this movable after I had got done making it because it did turn a little bit stiffer after using resin. Now the tricky part was making it stay connected to the stove pipe but still being able to squeeze it. My solution was taking a small piece of armature wire and making a spring on one end poking a hole in the tube and then screwing the spring area in and then sliding the bellows on top of it. To get it to stay permanently, I used resin alongside my piece of metal so that way it didn't get on the wood or the fabric. And that worked, but I did lose a little bit of movement. For the next part, you'll need some of this plastic trim. I got mine from Dollar Tree. At one point in time, I painted this bit gold. Originally, it is silver. Next, you'll need a pokey tool to poke a hole straight through the center. Next, you'll need a jewelry head pin and poke it through the hole. And just like we did for the bellows, we're going to make a little bit of a coil in the other end so we can screw it into the straw. I don't have a screenshot of it, but just above where the stovepipe goes into the warming cupboard, there's an airflow adjustment knob. After getting it inside the stovepipe and where I wanted it set, I used resin to keep it in place. Next was coloring the bellows black. You do not have to do this if you don't want to, but it's just what I did for mine. Okay, now that we've got it all put together, it's time to paint. I went with a bottom layer of black and then went over it with a bronze color, I believe. I didn't want to use silver and I didn't have any copper.
Okay, the last thing we need to do is stick the stove pipe in the stove. Because I had the slightest gap in between mine, I used the resin to hold it together and fill that space. And one more test squeeze before considering it done. I didn't permanently attach the warming cupboard to the stove pipe because the warming cupboard is going to be attached to the wall and I want to be able to take the stove and stove pipe out if I ever have to. And with that, it brings us to the end of our tutorial. If you've made it this far, thank you for being here. Next tutorial, we'll be making a glass table. As always, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe because it all really helps me out a lot. Thank you, Ginger, and I'll see you next time.